This is my Mark III Golf budget build. And with a £300 budget in each episode, we're going to transform this car and take you on the trip with me. I'll go through where I got the parts from, how much it cost and how to do it. In the first episode, we revealed the car, put on some lowering springs, put on some new wheels, gave the car a really good clean, took it on a road test and uncovered many problems with this car, which we will get onto. But first, we need to install some new parts. The £300 budget puts us in the shoes of the average Brit who will have £340 spare after bills and activities. I rounded the budget down to make things even more challenging who knows the rest can even fund car show tickets despite the tight budget i'm taking this challenge seriously to prove to you guys you can follow in my footsteps and build a cool car for yourself on average living conditions while ticking items off the maintenance list as well today i bought a major service kit off ebay as well as all three belts it's one thing modifying your car but if the engine sounds like it wants to sign out what's the point anyway let's start spannering i normally start off the service by draining the oil first but i want to do an engine flush all we need to do is get the car up to temperature, pour engine flush into the filler and run for 15 minutes on fast idle. Then drain the oil and remove the oil filter. The engine flush helps neutralise engine acids while it loosens and removes sludge from inside the engine, most of which isn't removed on a typical oil change, so it's definitely needed on a 26 year old engine. In Catering, my first problem of the day, they sent out the wrong spot plug so the HT leaves can't actually clip on. No worries though, I ordered a new set and installed them a couple of days later. The old ones were full of soot and the centre piece was actually broken off cylinder number two so that definitely wouldn't have helped. Now I can tighten up the new Land Rover sump bung which has a rubber seal. It can be reused a few times instead of the one time copper seals BW uses. While under the car I noticed this power steering bracket was loose so I found a suitable nut and washer and secured it all in place. Now to put on the new oil filter making sure the seal has been lubricated to prevent a risk of the seal twisting and causing a leak when tightening. Then fill the engine with oil and run for a few minutes to give the oil a chance to circulate and check the leaks. After that I'm replacing the air filter by removing the intake hose, the retaining rings holding the airbox to the body, the mass airflow and intake temp sensor connectors and the clips holding both the upper and lower part of the airbox. On goes the new one and installed everything back in reverse order. dipstick tube is on and the reason why we replace these is because where it mounts just in there the plastic actually breaks off into the dipstick metal tubing and it can actually drop down into the engine so I've had it happen a few times on a few cars and obviously you don't want plastic circulating around with your oil so I always replace these because it's six pound and it's peace of mind then this one looks like it's original due to the part number on the side and the VW stamping, so this one probably wanted replacing. So, on to the next. Once that's done, it's a job under the car near the rear axle to replace the fuel filter. The fuel filter is secured in the filter housing and clipped to the body of the car. It's always easier to disconnect the fuel lines first as they can be stuck on. I noticed when taking it off, the housing was cracked in multiple places. I repaired this with my hot staple machine, which works by heating up the staple. Then you press across a cracked piece of plastic, melting the staple through and hardening in place, which puts the structure back into whatever you're repairing, just like this. On goes the new filter, making sure the arrow is pointed to the direction of the flow of the fuel to the engine.
All right guys, that is the main service done. All we need to do now is replace all of the belts, which is what's gonna take me some time because we also have a timing belt to do. The timing belt is the most important one. If we will show you just down here, just behind this cover, is the timing belt. So essentially what it's there to do is synchronize the camshaft with the crankshaft so everything is spinning around at the right time. If the belt jumps teeth, or splits that could grenade your engine. I'll show you what we do as we go around replacing all these belts. But we have to remove all this intake off again. <laughs> but let's get on with it. With the service all complete, all I need to do now is the three belts. Now we can't just replace the timing belt without taking off the alternator belt, and we can't do the alternator belt without taking off the power steering belt. So let's do that one first. I'm just loosening the bolts holding the bracket to the power steering pump, then the two main bolts so we can pivot the pump forward to remove the tension out of the belt. But I'm so frustrated Hello to my loneliness I guess that ignorance is bliss Take me back to the heart now Rewind, take it out of cue Looking at the old one, I'm not surprised why it was noisy. This one was definitely close to snapping. Good job we're replacing it today. Next is the alternator belt, which is secured with two 30mm bolts. But again, we only need to loosen, not fully remove. Underneath is an automatic tensioner which is basically a big spring pushing on the alternator so the belt is at the right tension at all times. Just need to pry on the alternator to relieve the tension and remove the second belt. This one wasn't as bad but you can see it was starting to crack in places so definitely worth doing. The intake hose is in the way so we need to remove it as well as the air box for the second time, unclip and lift out the upper timing cover, then remove the engine mount which is a convertible specific part. Working on taking out the lower timing cover, I need to remove the crank and water pump pulley, removing the bolts holding them on, then lift out the lower cover. The lower timing bolt cover came off in two pieces, but we can whip out the hot stapler for the second time today and make a decent repair. At this point, I was making sure the timing marks lined up so I could remove and replace the belt, knowing it's all in the right position using the original manufacturer marks. Whew. Okay guys, so the car is stripped down to the point where I need to start taking the belt off and the tensioner. One thing I did notice is the timing is slightly out in this car. If you look at the top one, he's lined up. You've got the intermediate shaft for the distributor, which is connected to this one. That's coupled teeth off. Just here, that left white mark has a small line in it. That is supposed to line up. There's a little tooth inside that it's supposed to line up with. I'm so sorry, I can't really focus very well. We're actually out of time, just by a little bit. Now some cars can run like that, they just don't run optimal. Mixing with the spark plugs and the timing, that's obviously not gonna make this car run any better. When we set everything up, I'm gonna make sure the camshaft is lined up to the mark, the intermediate shaft is lined up to that mark, and then the flywheel tooth is lined up to that mark. Then I'll put the belt on, rather than use the existing timing marks that somebody else has done, because I think they're out. Ideally, you wanna use the manufacturer's markings, obviously, because they're the ones that assembled the engine. So that's what I'm going off, whether it goes bang or not. Mm. Once the new belt is on and the tension is replaced and secured, I rotate the crankshaft a few full revolutions and check the marks line up, which you can see here. Now I can start installing in reverse order, replacing the other two belts while with it. Okay, the timing belt has been installed and the car has been built back up. Oh, that's scary. The 
culprit for the belt noise was a missing bolt. So I managed to find the bolt in the end. I had to remove the alternator and bracket, which was very annoying considering how late it was at night. But I bolted it up all okay. The noise went away. You can see the joy in my face knowing it's all finished, back together, and the timing belt was a success. Eager to test out the car, I went for a drive the next day. If you guys need any more convincing on why you should buy a convertible, just, just look at this. It's absolutely beautiful. It's not too sunny, it's not too dark. There's nobody on the road anymore and the weather has started to drop down a little bit so it's not too hot. You've just got you and the convertible just chilling, driving down some nice B roads, just having a really nice time opening the car out. And the fact that we've just serviced the car, we've serviced everything that we possibly can, the car is gonna thank us for it. And it runs a lot better than it did before. So not only is it a satisfying drive just because we have a convertible, but the fact that everything is refreshed so we can start modifying the car now. I also can't tell you how much faster this is to the Mark II. It is like night and day. You put your foot down, you just got instant power. Oh, and we got a tunnel. Oh, I love this car. All right, guys, so it is now the next morning. I am revitalized. Picked up a couple of injuries, as you do with working on cars, but we've done all of the belts, we've serviced the car, and it runs perfectly now this is aqua blue which is one of my most favorite colors on a corrado i've always said if i was to own a corrado i would have it aqua blue vr61 so if anybody wants to swap me for my mark ii plus some cash my way let me know because i'll probably take it as we start ticking off things on this car it is going to be so much better guys we've got so much stuff planned and overall guys we're going to make this car look absolutely phenomenal we have got fresh oil fresh oil filter fresh air filter we've got all new belts as you can see everything looks beautiful and then the belt just at the bottom has been replaced also under sort of this area we've got a brand new fresh fuel filter done so maintenance wise engine wise this car should be perfect to modify can't wait to show you guys what we get up to so make sure you stay subscribed and like these videos if you do enjoy it if there's any modifications you want to see on the car let me know in the comments down below although i have this series planned out for the next 15 episodes which is good for you guys there is a lot of things that are still open to ideas so if there's any videos you guys want to see if there's any modifications you want to see me put on this car just let me know but just look at it now it's so much better now it's lowered and those wheels on anybody is interested i'll give you a closer look i don't know the brand if i'm honest guys but they're 17 by 7 they've got 205 40 17 tires on it and they don't look too bad on this car to be fair i just think 17s are a little bit too big and i want to go a little bit lower on the front but but that is something you guys are going to have to wait till the next episode for i cannot wait to start getting some modifications put on this car but maintenance is key guys because if you fail to do maintenance if you fail to service your car you're not going to have a car to put modifications on to start with and i'm probably one of the first people that pushes it off pushes it off and sort of wait till last minute get the maintenance done out of the way then you can continue with modifying this car now we're done and dusted on episode two of the budget build series let's add up what we've spent so the timing belt air filter oil oil filter fuel spark plugs power steering belt auxiliary belt sump bung and dipstick guide tube all added up to 122 pounds and 61 pence so we're well within the 300 pound budget Times are tough for people at the minute, but this series is here to give hope to the average house who maybe can't afford to spend thousands on a car every month. But stay tuned for the next episode as I'll be installing the first batch of mods. You're definitely not going to want to miss it. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to give it a like and subscribe. Peace.